Hello, this is Julia Whittup with Talk Story Today. And we have with us today, Amanda. Oh, Amanda, what was your last name? Dobra Hope. Oh, well, I'm glad I had to ask you because I'm sure I would have mangled it. <laughs> and uh, she's gonna talk to us about healing the masculine and the feminine. And I, I'm sure that's very interesting to everybody. Well, it is to me anyway. <laughs> so. Um, Tell us more about how you got into the shamanistic field. Um, I guess I wouldn't particularly say I do any shamanistic or shamanism things. Um, I obviously resonate with what you do and because it's kind of in the realm of what I do. I went to school for metaphysics, but I always say I don't necessarily consider myself a, a metaphysician. Um, I like to kind of take different things from different uh, traditions and kind of put it in a soup of whatever works best for me. So um, you're definitely in the realm of things that I study and, and I'm interested in, um, but I don't know that I would call myself a shaman necessarily. Okay. So, okay. So you haven't had some dramatic uh, experience that led you to this? Um, I was a truth seeker since I was a, a little kid. I was always looking for, you know, I was the Sherlock Holmes of, of feelings and emotions and what was going on with people. And, um, you know, also what was going on in the world and what I was always a what's under that and what's under that and what's under that because I, you know, a lot of times I could, I could very well feel I'm a feeler and mm -hmm. uh, an empath and a, and a clear sentient so I can feel and I was new and clear cognizant too. So I'm, you know, could know and feel when things weren't quite right. And yeah. when the, the, what was being said and, or told and, you know, um, presented as truth wasn't necessarily the, the whole picture. So. Yes. Yes. Just out of curiosity, are you feeling that way about this virus thing? Like we're not getting the whole picture? We never get the whole picture of anything. <laughs> We never get the whole picture of anything. Um, I just like to stay in my my energy and and you know my solid base and kind of um, you know I read a lot of things and hear a lot of things and have read and heard a lot of things and I just kind of keep an open mind um, and stay grounded in my own my own stuff. Okay. Well, tell us about your books. You've written a couple of books or more. Three. Yep. Three. Okay. Working on a fourth. <laughs> wow. Okay. Tell us about all of them. <laughs> sure. Um, the first one, I never knew I was going to write books. It was not something I thought I was going to do. Um, when I kind of switched careers, I used to own dance studios. I did that for 10 years because I started teaching dance when I was 15 and um, just kind of kept going. And so I opened dance studios and owned those for 10 years. And then I just um, was sort of just completed that part of my life. And this thing that I've had in me since I was younger um, came out, this just quest for, you know, what's, what's beyond what's being presented and how do I help people live their best life and how do I help people be authentic and be true to themselves and find out who they really are inside, you know, and help them have better relationships with themselves, the people around them and the world at large, you know, keeping it sustainable, understanding that we're all part of the same thing here and how do we, how do we harmonize that better? So um, this all just kind of, you know, came flowing and I was called out to Hawaii, um, very strongly called out to Hawaii. So I went out there and began writing this, this first book that, like I said, I never planned on writing anything. It just kind of kept flying out of me. And so that one is called Life Salad. And that is a, um, I call it a spiritual pocketbook. <laughs> and it's a because it's, it's not real long and you can kind of open it up to you know any page and get a, a little wisdom from it but it's all about peeling back the onion skin and the different layers so that's kind of a, a primer to you know really opening up to hey there's more than what we've been told um so that's for people kind of just opening up to it so it's all about how do we peel back the layers of what we've been told sold whatever else to find out who we really are so you know, what it, you know, we go into our spiritual closet and open it up and go, wait a minute, is this even mine? You know, is this somebody else's? Mm -hmm. Does someone tell me to believe this? Um, what is this? So, you know, I talk about how to kind of pull yourself away from certain societal things, maybe TV and newspaper, 
um, and start tuning more into yourself. So it's just kind of a, you know, it's a light book. I've written it in kind of a quippy language um, to not be super serious, but to get people started on how do we start to peel back these layers and find out who, who they really are um, yeah. without what they were told to be or expected to be or, you know, the story they bought, you know, of, of who they were told right. they needed. So that's the first one and that came out, it ended up coming out in 2012 and I just sort of self-published it, put it out there because I just, I wasn't planning on doing anything with it. I just needed to get it out of me. Um, so that's on Amazon. And then um, I ended up doing my doctorate of holistic life coaching in the, the metaphysic university that I went to. And um, I had already been writing this other book and it's, it's this one, it's this healing of the masculine and feminine. Um, but it was in its beginning stages at that point. And they, their program is such that you can get bachelor, master, um, doctorate. And after their masters, you can get, um, a master of, or sorry, a, um, a ministerial ordination as well. And so I wanted that so I could do weddings and counseling and things like that. And so I went up to their master's program and I thought, eh, I'm done. I don't really feel like writing a giant dissertation for their doctorate in holistic life coaching, I'm good. And they called me up one day and they said, so are you ever gonna do that dissertation and get your doctorate? And I was like, well, I don't know, I'm writing this book and so maybe I could transfer it into um, a dissertation. Uh -huh. They said, yeah, you should do that. And so I said, all right. And so that was a process. Um, I ended up, literally, I, I had to go to the library and get this giant stack of books. And because it was an academic paper, I had to you know, research other people's stuff, but I didn't, want to do that and I didn't want to cite other people's stuff and I didn't want to research any other people's stuff because I had so much of my own that I wanted to you know do it and I wanted it to be my book because it was a book and so mm -hmm. transferring into that paper I, I did literally throw the book across the room a couple times um, the different books I was working <laughs> with because <laughs> I wasn't happy I didn't want to be writing this academic paper and I just wanted to write this book and so but for some reason I kept doing it and you know, got to the end and wrote the paper and got my doctorate in holistic life coaching. And then somewhere in the year or two after that, this other book started coming out of me and that one is Holding Space. And that was my second one. And the subtitle on that is a guide to supporting others while remembering to take care of yourself first. Nice. Yeah, so that was <laughs> about the power of being. And the two reasons I wrote that one were Number one, I wanted to explain and define the term holding space because it's kind of loosely thrown around, you know, different circles, but it wasn't really pulled down and defined. So I wanted to define it. And then the other thing I wanted to do was educate people on what exactly it was, that it was being, that it was a feminine, divine feminine energy, and that it was important and that it takes a lot of energy mm -hmm. because there's so much... Um, emphasis on the the masculine energy and the doing and the hurry 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 and the you know productivity and everything and that beingness that feminine energy that you know opening up to that creative space or holding space is just shoved away as that's not important and um it doesn't take any energy what are you doing you're just sitting there um there was a time i tell this story there was a time that um i was required by my spiritual team that i listen to every day to sit for two months. And when I wasn't doing anything else, I couldn't even meditate. I, I meditated also, you know, a different part of time, but then I was supposed to sit. So when I wasn't taking care of the other things I needed to take care of throughout the day, I had to literally sit in a chair and stare at the wall. And I would wake up every morning and ask them, so what are we doing today? You know, are we doing something else? No, we're sitting. You know, so as we got further and further along, I would say, you know, what are we doing? Are we doing, no, we're sitting. I got further for a long, you know, we're sitting today, aren't we? You know, and I'd finally get just wrap my head around, okay, we're sitting. And when I was finally just fine with it, and it had been two months, they said, no, you're not sitting today. We're doing something else. <laughs> and so in that process, you know, I had people come to my house and, you know, to drop things off or whatever. And they'd be like, what are you doing? Just sitting on your couch eating bonbons all day? And I was like, you have no idea what I'm doing and how hard it is. And for me, I was a super A-type personality when I had my dance studios and before that. Oh, and that's why they wanted you to do something different. Yes. I call it my spiritual detox. I had to go, 
one side to the other so I could end up in balance. So that's what this virus has been for me, like a gift to stop moving constantly. There you go. <laughs> for sure. So yeah, so people would say, well, what are you doing? You're not doing anything worthwhile or whatever. And I'm like, you have no idea how hard this is, how important it is, and how much energy it takes. And so oh. You know, I realized all that time that we hold space for ourselves or we hold space, you know, professionally for, you know, clients or, or an audience or we're holding space for friends or we're holding space for our own dreams or we're holding space for people to, to kind of wake up or, you know, any different things, holding space for relationships and how much energy that takes to just always have that kind of on your side burner. Mm -hmm. And so this book just came flying out of me like I was given all of the the words, you know, my, my team just kind of, and I was, I, I write old school. I write with my pen and, and notebook in the beginning, and then I'll, you know, type it up and then move things around or whatever. But I was just trying to keep up with, with everything they were feeding me, um, you know, in uh, unison with my, my own stuff, my own stories, my own ideas. And so this other book just came flying out of me. And you know, I was guided just find a find a publisher. We want you to get a publisher on this one. This is going to be for real deal. Um, at this point, I already had started life coaching um, for years. I've been doing that since 2008 um, when I kind of switched everything over. And then, like I said, that first book came out in 2012. So I said, get a publisher. You know, this is going to be for real. Don't just do this for just to get it out of you. And um, it was a big, meaty book. And I was like, no, this needs to get out there. People need to hear this. And um, so I did. I um, sent my manuscript off to one publisher who was in my genre. Um, and they, within a week, got back to me. And, you know, the original was they wanted, like, I don't know, the first two chapters. Within a week, they said, send us the rest of it. You know, I think before that week was even over, they said, we want it. So um, so I published with a, a small press in my genre. And um, that was in 2016. And ended up doing a TEDx talk um, on that um subject mm -hmm. um, the book ended up winning two awards which was super awesome one of them was one i didn't even know about didn't apply for it was in europe and i googled my name one day and found out that i won a book award in europe <laughs> <laughs> and it was a pretty big one i think i was wow. up to epoch and you know those kind of books and i was like great awesome wow. so, uh, so that was my second book and then um, this, the healing of the masculine and feminine kind of came around again. So I guess holding space needed to come out in between there. And then the healing of the masculine and feminine came back around. And this book I have been trying to get out since last year, actually. And um, just finances and whatever just kept getting pushed. And so it was very interesting that this book that really deals with what is going on in the world right now came out on March 10th in the midst of all of this. Yeah. And, the week before, I live in Nashville, and actually the week before we had that Nashville tornado. Um, and so I was like, okay, here's my book launch. I don't really feel like trying to sell people on my book right now or to try and read this because they're dealing with a tornado and, you know. And it was born on a plague. <laughs> and so, yeah, I thought, well, this is really important for what's going on right now in the world, this, this information. But I was trying to help people with the, because I, you know, we did well with everything you know people a mile away from us did not have you know um as good of a time with things our house was untouched and so I was trying to help other people and um do what I could and so it was just kind of kind tell of wacky us why, um, tell us why healing the masculine and feminine is important right now so the subtitle after the healing of the masculine and feminine is how to truly change the world from the inside out. So as you know, if you're dealing with shamanic um, arts and things like that and indigenous tribes, I mean, look at your, your cool logo there. Um, you obviously know, and hopefully most of your listeners know that the feminine, the, which is represented by women and indigenous cultures and nature and um, art and um, being and stillness and, and holding space and things like that, that has been shoved away in our culture. Mm -hmm. And it's also been shoved away in ourselves. So, uh, you know, I explain to people who don't understand um, or who haven't heard it before about the divine masculine and divine feminine as energies and how each one of us has them, whether we're male, female, other, it doesn't matter. 
um, we have both those energies and everything in our world has both those energies. So, you know, I talk about the feminine energy being, you know, all those things, the stillness, the holding space, the relationships, the nature, the, you know, things like that. And the masculine being the doing, the action steps, the plans, the productivity, you know, things like that. So in order to balance the outside of the world, you know, there's been so many things that programs and things that try to attack the problems and attack is really the, the good word from the outside in uh -huh. you know an anti this group and an anti that you know group and let's throw all our money at figuring out how to solve this or whatever but but you know as we both know the the answer you know as a life coach and a writer in this in this genre the answer is way underneath that right and so what it is, is what we need to do is balance those energies inside of us. And when we start doing that, we affect ourselves, we affect those close to us, you know, our partners, our, our friends, our families, we affect the communities, we affect, and then, you know, it ripples out from there. So uh, we will see on the big stage, you know, a change when we balance it on the inside, but because it's been so repressed on the outside, it's been all repressed in everybody's insides and you know, we're not going to see that sustainability and that harmony outside unless we can start to cultivate it and develop it on the inside. So it's just kind of introducing people to this, this part of us that's been discouraged and pushed away and, you know, um, buried by society as don't look there. That's, we don't look at that. That's not important. That's not um, something we honor and we absolutely have to, pull all that back up and able to you know to be able to continue any semblance of thriving life on this planet right wow okay that sounds like an important book and where can people get that book um it's on all the major online um sites barnes and noble and amazon and whatever other ones picked it up um you know if you put my name in amanda dobra hope the healing of Can the masculine you, and feminine. Do you mind typing that in the chat box for us? The uh, uh, your um, last yeah. name, because then people can see that and. Oops, that might always a little big there. Um, I also do have a book trailer on my YouTube channel. Um, so if people just want to kind of check out um, a little bit of what's about, there's a, there's a video book trailer. That's I think four minutes. No, maybe it's a minute. I'm not sure. It's short. And what's um, your YouTube channel? Yeah. Just my name. I would have to go look quick, but I can, I can put it in later if you want me to do. Okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, so there's there's that. Um, you know, obviously on Amazon, I think even Barnes and Noble now, you can read the first, you know, a few pages or be the intro or something like that, and mm -hmm. that look at features. So that's something people can do too if they want to take a look there. But um, this third book is definitely a meaty one. Um, you know, it, it explains concepts that people who are entirely new to it. I explain it in a way where I'm not insulting people who are far ahead in these, in these mm -hmm. concepts and these teachings, but I'm also saying it in a way where people who aren't familiar with it can at least have some idea what's going on. Um, right. So like I said, I'm not, I'm not insulting the experienced reader, but I'm not um, too far ahead that the new reader is going to be lost have any idea what's happening. Yeah. Okay. Wow. This sounds good. I, you might think about giving an online workshop too. I definitely do that. Um, I did start doing them for holding space. I was actually helping um, different practitioners, uh, massage therapists and um, life coaches and people like that, um, energy healers to because they hold space for their clients in a big way. And a lot of them don't know how to separate themselves and, you know, provide that for their clients without taking it on and having a hard time holding the space and things. So I was um, giving online workshops for holding space. This one, like I said, because it just came out and um, amidst all the other stuff that was happening, um, I haven't had time to, to go ahead with any of that yet, but for sure, tell me what you're looking for audience and um, I will 
do it have huh? a better time um, creating around that around those um, guidelines then um, but I do have I'm looking to do uh, my next guidance was to do a series of Kindle books so just shorter books that were only ebooks mm -hmm. and um, they're all going to be around a uh, how-to with love um, and I'm working on one currently um, for how to love when the world seems to have gone crazy so um, <laughs> That is my new one. <laughs> <laughs> Just all the time. The world seems kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah, how to be love, how to access love, how to love. Yes. Wow. Well, thank you. What a wonderful interview this has been. And uh, I'm hoping we'll have you back on again soon. Sounds good. Maybe for something longer. So thanks for being here. And this will be. Uh, streamed onto YouTube next Tuesday at 6.30. Okay. Okay.